Welcome to Stock Shots. Please visit our website at www.stockshots.tv. That's www.stockshotz.tv. Our guest today is teacher and author Dr. Jim Mirabella. We had the opportunity to visit with Dr. Mirabella on a range of subjects, most importantly, the upcoming presidential election, how that will affect our economy, and how it will affect the American family. So listen in now as we have the opportunity to visit with Dr. Jim Mirabella. Our guest tonight is Dr. Jim Mirabella. Dr. Mirabella is a professor at Jacksonville University and is also an online professor at Capella University. Dr. Mirabella, thank you for taking time to be with us tonight. No, you're welcome. We'd like to start the show by asking you to talk to us a little bit about the book that you co-authored with Dr. Danielle Babb, Make Money Teaching Online. Well, uh, this whole thing really started a couple of years ago, about really three or four years ago with us. Uh, I've been teaching online for several years. I've been adjuncting, part-time teacher, for 20 years. I've been doing corporate jobs, military jobs, whatever, and teaching on the side. When online opportunities came about about 10 years ago, it really opened a lot of doors because teaching in a classroom, you can only teach certain nights of the week and you had a limited amount of time. Online, you were able to do so many more classes all day, all night, whatever, and I saw opportunities to do a lot more, and I found myself doing more and more and more online classes, and it was getting to the point where I was making more doing that than I was in my full-time job. Uh, I got to the, so burned out on my regular job, I actually quit my corporate job and said I'm just going to give it all to just teaching, and I found that I was, my income actually tripled doing that. Uh, one of the schools I was working at was Capella University. Danielle was my one of my, my very, very first doctoral mentee, basically a by Z. And uh, she said, God, I would love to have your life. And so I to- ta- coached her into how to go about getting to that point where you could be teaching online. And she did it for a year and got to the point where she was doing it better than me and said, we should write a book on this. This is great. I'm making more. I quit my real job. So what we did is we wrote a book to advise people on how to do this, how to get this life, how to find the jobs, and make yourself, you know, make it to where you become independent of uh, full-time work, and you can actually live a good life as a part-time worker. That's great. And when Dr. Babb was on the show, we were talking, this is really the wave of the future, because I know, look at gas prices, and that's one of the things that we've talked about over and over on the show. They just seem to keep going up, and the, and the commute uh, to the bedroom is, is much better than a uh, 45-mile commute that uh, many of us uh, take on a daily basis now. So uh, Absolutely. I really, really think that is the wave of the future, and uh, uh, it's a great book. Well, thank you. Yeah, but the other thing, too, that the, the hidden gem is the fact that you actually get to spend more time with your family. I mean, I have a, a three-year-old, and I'll tell you, the idea that I get to wake up when I want to wake up and spend all day with him it's just great. My wife and I are stay-at-home parents, and you don't get that anymore. We're actually with him all the time. I can kind of ch- adjust my work schedule around his sleeping schedule. They want to go to the zoo. I can drop everything and go with them to the zoo and pick up the work later, stay up as late as I want. So I can take as much work or as little work as I want, and it's just incredible. And people think there's no job security, but that's not really true because if you're a contractor, you do a good job, they bring you back. So I feel more secure here in doing this kind of work, which I've been doing successfully for a lot of years than I've ever felt in a job where you get annual evaluations and budget gets cut and so on. They have to get rid of people just to make the budgets look good because we are a bargain in any, in any school. So I've done better and I feel better about my life. So, yeah, if you have a family, there's nothing better than this. That's great. And, and there are... There are so many people now that need to restore uh, family values in their life. So, so that is awesome. And I know as a father of three, uh, you can't replace those times because these kids are growing up faster every day. Uh, and and that's, that's a wonderful story to hear. Thank you. Yes, I'm doing it all for, for my family. It means so much more to me. So I keep that as a focal point of every decision I make. I am the same way. And speaking of family values, let's transition now into the the presidential election, which is going to be one of the most important of our lifetime, certainly, and certainly for our children. What we do over the next four years is going to be critical in uh, the country that they will that we hand over to them. Uh, what do you see economically? We, we we've seen a lot of negative things in the economy lately. We're hearing most of the pundits say that it's stabilizing. 
what effect do you see the presidential election having on the economy if the Democrats win and then if the Republicans win? Well, I think we're essentially in trouble either way, personally, but more so if the Democrats win. I think we'll just bleed a lot slower if the Republicans win, as the way it looks. Um, the way the Democrats want to spend money, it's just scary. Uh, the one that when you have socialized medicine among, amongst everything else, uh, as far as the economy goes, the Democrats want to just spend, spend, spend. I mean, I agree. Everybody seems to want to spend, even the Republicans. But there's a difference between spending on defense and spending on their nonsense. We have to spend on defense. If we don't, we will. Our country will really be in a world of hurt. People say, "Well, get out of the war, and you'll save your." You know, we'll help ourselves economically. But the reality is that they come and keep destroying. Our, you know, look what happened when they came and destroyed our country, basically hit the World Trade Center, terrorized our country, the economy, we actually got hurt, got devastated by it. We, you know, you've got to spend on the right things, and as George, uh, you know, as Patton said, you know, let's fight the war over there versus fighting it over here. And you know, so I believe in that. Things like socialized medicine, my God, I know people who think what a wonderful idea it is because it's so great in Canada and Germany, it works wonderfully, you don't have to pay anything. The only people who benefit are the ones that don't work, that bleed off, live off of the rest of us. But they're like 72% of their income or something goes into taxes to help take care of this. And people think, well, isn't that a good way of giving back or something? And that's utter nonsense. You're giving away most of your money to pay for socialized medicine so that if you need to go to a doctor, you then don't have to pay and it's free that they make it out. But the lines are outrageous. Every time a parent has a kid with a sniffle, they'll have a choice of going to the pharmacy and paying for their for medicine or going to the doctor and getting it for free. So while you have a serious problem, you're going to get in line behind all these people who just don't want to buy cough drops, and the lines are going to get outrageous. The medical care will go down. You won't be able to sue a doctor for bad service. You won't get to see your choice of doctors, but this is supposed to be good for us. Uh, and, you know, and it's going to cost us a fortune to take care of them. So I don't see how it's going to help, but they're going to make you feel like it isn't. The people that are going to vote for it are the people who aren't contributing to society. The drains on the society, which is 49% of the country, are the ones that are actually going to do the voting, and that's what they're depending on to, uh, to su support their getting elected. Uh, of course, they're going to just keep on finding way, if, you know, a waste, wasted opportunities. I'm sorry, wait, opportunities to waste more and more of our money, and they never give it back. You know, the uh, what's it called, the the, the pig, uh, the, the pork. That's right. Where they'll just raise taxes, spend on ridiculous programs, and then when the programs are done, they don't give it back. They just find more places to hide it, uh, just so that they can keep on spending and justify raising more taxes. So. And, and, you know, I think that, that there's there are two critical pieces of this health care uh, that, that people are not seeing. And first of all, any time you get the government in anything, it's going to be inefficient. And, and so what they're going to do is they're going to try to have their price controls on physicians. I think that's going to keep the best and the brightest from going into medicine, and that's what we Absolutely. need. No one's going to want to be a doctor if you can't earn a living. That's right. Why would you go through all of that school, uh, put up with the liability, all those things, if you're not going to make an above-average income, I think they should be reimbursed above average. They take on, uh, they have people's lives in their hands. So we need the best and the brightest in medical school, and I think the, the DEMS plan is going to stifle that. Definitely. Second thing, I think it's going to do the same thing to the drug companies because uh, they're, they're already uh, trying to control what they pay for certain medications. Uh, you you know that these companies, yeah, they have a lot of cash, but they continually have to cycle that cash back into R and D to stay ahead of the curve, and that's what makes our healthcare system great. And I think we lose that if we if we go to this massive government run uh, program. So that that really scares me personally. I know when people say, well, you know, we should get our drugs from Canada; it's cheaper. What people don't realize is that they don't screen their drugs. That's why it's cheaper. We're paying for protection, and people don't realize they can just send all the garbage out. You don't even know if you're getting medicine in your medicine, but you're saving money. So it, it, and why is it the Canadians come down to America to get treated? If it's so darn great, why are they coming here? 